Is that a kiss? Hey guys, one more hurricane update. It's supposed to be coming at this point um, tomorrow. So we are getting things ready. Now, I thought I would just share one or two interesting things with you, including, or in addition to the fact that um, our birds and the dogs, everybody's kind of chill today. So I actually think that the animals know that something's coming. Although here um, in the West Palm Beach area, we're not supposed to be hit real hard. I'm smart enough to know that like my birds, the hurricanes are unpredictable. You never know when they're gonna just fly off. So it's like, it's not supposed to come to us, but we are preparing. And that means that like all of our patio furniture, everything has to come inside because during a hurricane, things will fly around and you don't want things flying around and hurting, damaging people, houses, cars, that kind of thing. <coughs> and um, we're also gonna be putting, closing our hurricane shutters so that that protects the windows. Uh, in case something is flying around, you know, the windows don't get broken, that kind of thing. So we are doing our final preparations. Uh, we've been preparing for a couple of days now and it just so happened that yesterday I had an appointment at my avian vet, who's also an exotic vet. So Diva here, my Major Mitchell, as opposed to Bella, my invisible rose-breasted cockatoo, who flew off. Um, and don't worry guys, you, you see the lanai, it's all screened in. So they're, they're nice and safe. It's really great back here. They can fly around and no worries. Um, but I know, I know, she sees the dogs. The puppies, not the puppies. Um, I'm still planning on a video to talk about acclimating the birds to the dogs. But anyway, I uh, had to go. I wanted to take my sugar glider boys <clears throat> to the vet to be, uh, what is it? I always forget, neutered, um, to become sterile. To, because we, we don't want more sugar glider babies. Um, and so I ran into a breeder friend who said that they're gonna have to bring all of their birds in. So they're really watching the hurricane updates to see what's gonna be coming uh, because they do need to bring all of their breeders in. Now, um, and then I, I was asking about it and they're like, oh, it's, it's so, it's, it's a pain. Uh, I go, is it more stressful for you guys or for the birds? And they're like, for us and you know I don't I mean it's really stressful those cages you know we're talking about birds that aren't like our birds that are pet birds and these are not tame birds right these are birds that are used to relating to each other they are used to not being handled by humans they are used to <clears throat> going around their flight cages and pretty much doing what they want to do so now all of a sudden to have a, a human come and contain them uh, is stressful. But one of the reasons it's so stressful for a human, in case you didn't see my other video on the hurricane, is they they have these big cages, right? So, and so it's hard to get the birds and you know get them in a corner or whatever so that you can put them in a towel and safely hold them to safely put them in the carrier cage or whatever holding cage. And the problem is, Unlike my lanai out here, um, I'll show you in a minute, but um, Bella just flew off and she's just perched over on our hammock. She is contained here. In the case of trying to capture a parrot that isn't tame, that is a breeding parrot, when they open the cage, they have to make sure the parrot doesn't get past them because there's no netting, there's nothing. If they get past them, that's it. It's not like you could call them back to you. There's no recall training because these are not tame birds. There's no nothing. And of course, the worst part about it is that even though this bird has kind of like a wild mentality, not a domesticated one, so to speak, the worst part is they, they haven't been taught. They don't necessarily know or they haven't utilized their survival skills. So, you know, could they survive? Yes, but is it unlikely? Probably. So it's, it's really stressful in that sense for the humans because they have to try to get the birds in safely without hurting the humans and the birds and without letting them escape. So really tough. And so in addition to any other preps, you know, food prep, 
electric prep, water prep, you know, making sure you have everything just in case you, you know, all the services go down for a couple of days. They have to take care of all of that, gather the birds and have all that for the birds, right? You need to have anything that you need for the birds. And I was thinking, I didn't think to ask this yesterday when I saw my friend, I was thinking that if there are any birds on nests, not that this is really the time of year for it, but different species of course breed at different times of year. So if there are any, I think they're just gonna lose the babies. And that just sucks, no matter how you look at it. I'm, you know, So that's kind of um, financially, I think, difficult for a breeder. Um, I think the, the parrots aren't gonna really be too impacted because they're gonna, you know, they're just gonna go, okay, something happened and I'm not, I'm, I'm abandoning, well, they're not choosing to abandon their nest, but you know, when there's a hurricane, they might just be like, okay, I, I can't breed right now. But you know, it also really sucks for the babies. Now, if you have a brand new pair of parrots that are nesting for the first time, that's not a good experience for them because of course, they, they're nesting, they lay an egg, and then all hell breaks loose. There's a hurricane, <laughs> you know, that can spook them a little. So they might not want to nest in the future and they probably will, but in other words, that's a deterrent, right? They've sort of had a really um, negative experience. So really, I think interesting stuff. Now for us, um, we will be closing our accordion shutters um, like not at the last minute, but you know, as the hurricane is really super close because that's gonna turn off our lights, right? In other words, you're gonna get no natural light. So you take your window and you put up these, these shutters and of course no light comes through and the birds won't love being in the dark. They'll probably be fine because they'll know that there's something going on in nature kind of thing. And they'll be like, okay. I mean, like when it's rainy and like when we get a blustery storm, they, they're, they're kind of, you know, they're acclimated at this point. They don't like freak out, but they are certainly altered. They're more mellow. For example, if you take your parrot into the shower with you, and they have like a perch. Sometimes some parrots love to bathe in the shower. For some, just being in there and getting the steam is still really good for their feathers and their skin. But a lot of them will fall asleep. <laughs> you put them in the shower and it's like a lullaby. I, it's so cute. It's, it's really neat. They don't all do that, but a lot of them are like, kind of like, where am I? What's this shower thing? And then, you know, they hear the water and then they, you kind of see them go from, where am I to, they kind of relax and they're like, <laughs> it's, it's really sweet, it, you know, that it's so relaxing for them, that kind of thing. So, um, when there is a storm, sometimes they just kind of sit on a perch and they're just mellow. So it'll be interesting because this is um, gonna be a, you know, it's been a long time. We just, we've been really fortunate. We just haven't had a hurricane in a long time. And so um, it'll be interesting to see how the birds do, but it's also possible that we're just going to get like tropical storms and it won't be any big deal for us. We'll see how it goes, but we're all prepared. I'm prepared for the birds. We have extra water. We got um, containers. We're gonna fill tap water. And if I need to, I'll boil water for my birds because I always boil water anyway. I let it, I, I usually let it sit for half a day at least get to room temperature and then I use it as drinking water for the birds. Um, I have plenty of baby food because I have a few conures I'm feeding right now, a few parrotlets. Um, I have plenty of pellets. I have plenty of um, seeds and nuts. So like the birds are well taken care of, they're stocked up. If, if things got out of hand, I will stop worrying about diet. That doesn't mean I'm gonna give them pizza it means um, if I ran out of pellets, which would, I mean, I just, it, that's hard, hard to fathom that that would happen. But if I did run out and I had to feed a seed-based diet for a couple of days, would I do it? Absolutely, of course, you know. If, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm prepared so that I have backup plans and I'm all set. So I'm back, actually feeling very comfortable about the hurricane. Um, I do have good reason to, because we might get very little, we're, we're on that. We're either on beyond the outskirts of the cone or, or right at the edge of it, sort of depending on the computer model and, and the day. But we're, you know, for that reason and because we're well prepared, we've been preparing 
we're we're doing good just gonna stay home and take care of our birds and uh <laughs> and you know see how they're all doing play with the puppies and work on acclimating the dogs the birds are starting to get used to them just you know with the dogs just being around so all right guys i hope that's a interesting update for you um i do uh send my thoughts and prayers out not just to um places in the rest of florida that have birds but any animals at all i mean any people too so in my last video i was saying that my daughter and i were wondering how the wild birds handle um hurricanes and so we were really curious so my husband did a little research and he found something where they talked about the fact that pelicans they did a study of pelicans and the pelicans had gps's and they found that the pelicans actually flew like into the eye of the hurricane and up and so of course the eye of the hurricane is this quiet spot right like everything's swishing around it but this is sort of like a neutral zone so they go up high and they kind of fly with the hurricane so now they're not being tossed around they're kind of steady and it's sort of like a moving safe place and I figured that you know they if they do that and then they wait the hurricane might move on and that's my guess but it's kind of interesting they have found that wild birds they'll go like into the mangroves the mangroves are really interesting because they are trees in swamps like in waters so they're very rooty and the trees are like growing and it's kind of cool if you've ever been in a mangrove like if you've ever gone down to the Mayan Caribbean they have a lot of mangroves um, it's kind of like a jungle cruise and then there's like these trees with really long roots and they're just beautiful and and you could see the roots in the water and so you can you know you could see like if there were ducks they could just swim through so basically that would provide a lot of places for birds to go and hide because they could go into those mangroves and that's going to provide a lot of protection um, I was also wondering how my Australian birds would do in the wild because I don't know Australia well enough at all, but I think that Australia also gets hurricanes just like Florida. And I don't know like on what side of Australia, you know, I don't know those things, but I was kind of wondering how cockatoos in Australia would handle hurricanes. Um, and so I have a friend who might answer that anyway guys so just some interesting facts at least they're interesting to me i hope they're interesting to you too about um birds and how the birds in the wild handle the hurricanes because you know what are they gonna do all right guys um if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to my newsletter the link is down below and if you are looking for a book on um 30 Perfect Apartment Parrots, or on how to build your blissful bond, or on African Grey and Cape Parrots, please be sure to check out KB Raphael on Amazon. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And make sure to give Diva, Bella, and I one of these, even though Bella flew off. And I will catch you in the next blissful video.